Hello fellow history lovers and welcome back to my channel where if you love British history you are definitely in the right place. This series is called In This Week in British History and in this episode we're looking at events that happened between the 13th and the 19th of January. In this episode we are looking at the coronation of Elizabeth I. We're also going to have a look at the wedding of her grandparents Henry VII and Elizabeth of York plus other births and deaths that happened in this week. But first, I want to start with an Act of Parliament. On the 13th of January 1404, an Act was passed in Parliament called the Act Against Multipliers. This Act had been passed under the King, under King Henry IV, and it prevented anyone experimenting, trying to turn base metals into precious metals such as gold or silver. Such was the fear that someone would actually discover how to do it. With the benefit of scientific knowledge that we have now and is taught in schools, we know that that was impossible. They didn't know that at the time. And for someone to crack that mystery would have meant not only could they create themselves wealth, but it would undermine the economy of the whole country and perhaps further afield as well. This sort of practice was referred to as alchemy at the time and is actually a pre-runner and we would recognise many of the experiments that happened as a, an arm of science that we now call chemistry. The act wasn't repealed until 1689 under lobbying from scientists, um, notably Robert Boyle, who obviously wanted to continue with chemistry experiments. We're, we're a little further on now and the, the scientists wanted to be able to freely experiment. Boyle actually produced 40 books before he, he died and he died two years after the act was um, repealed. So he obviously had done quite a few of his experiments at a time where technically it was against the law. This week in 1559 was the ultimate week for Elizabeth I. This was the week of her coronation and they knew how to do ceremony. The Brits know how to do ceremony well and it comes from a long tradition. On the 12th of January, Elizabeth went to the Tower of London, traditionally where monarchs at the time would prepare for their coronation. On the 13th, again as was tradition, she created 11 Knights of the Order of Bath. On the 14th of January was Elizabeth's coronation procession and this is where she moved from the Tower of London through the City of London and to Westminster where she would spend her final night before the coronation ceremony at Westminster Abbey on the 15th of January. What is absolutely fantastic is that we have an account of the coronation procession on the 14th of January. It was written by Richard Mulcaster and it was in circulation around the country nine days following the, the ceremonial procession and it detailed what happened at every step of the way. And you can get hold of this and I will put a, a link to the title of it in the um, in the show notes. it's You can't obviously get uh, a hold of the original, it is a facsimile book um, and it's, it's quite difficult to get hold of but I there are a few copies that I found on Amazon and also there are some websites that I've also put links to in the show notes where you can um, find um, parts of the pamphlet transcribed. So what is fascinating also about that is that a copy of the uh, pamphlet was as part of Richard Mulcaster's payment was to be made available to the Queen so we can also surmise that the Queen saw and kept a copy perhaps as a souvenir of her own coronation. At around two o'clock on the 14th of January Elizabeth's procession left the Tower of London. Its first stop was at Fenchurch where According to the pamphlet, Elizabeth stopped the procession in order to hear a young boy read a poem. Now in reality it was probably much more stage managed than that, but the fact that this is how it was written in the pamphlet just goes to show that not only was this a fantastic record of 
the events of that day, but it also had a public relations and a propaganda purpose as well. The procession wound its way through the City of London on its way to Westminster, where Elizabeth was going to spend the final night before her coronation the following day at Westminster Abbey. Along the route, she saw five pageants, all an allegory, a story about Elizabeth and the promise of her new reign. The first one was to emphasise her strong lineage and it featured Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, her grandparents, who their unification, they were the personification of the unification of the houses of Lancaster and York. Their marriage had brought to the end, uh, the, it brought an end to the civil wars of that time that we now know as the Wars of the Roses. The pageant also featured Elizabeth's parents, Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn which seems like a bold move for the City of London. Anne's name had been um, through the mud during the reign of Elizabeth's half-sister, Mary I. But for Elizabeth to have her rightful place, her mother had to have been rightful queen. And this pageant put Anne Boleyn in her place there. And of course, Anne and Henry featured together in my little ode to the Tudors. <laughs> in duck form behind me. Elizabeth's coronation procession had been a fantastic success in terms of public relations. Elizabeth showed her charisma, she showed how she could connect with people of all levels of society and she had won the hearts of her people. The coronation itself on the 15th of January began with a procession from Westminster Hall, which you can still visit. It's inside the Houses of Parliament and is a must-must see if you ever can go. Her procession started from there. She walked to the Abbey where the coronation took place. Interestingly, it had both Latin and English elements, so both Catholic and Protestant, which was indicative really of Elizabeth's standpoint on religion at this point um, and was extremely clever and it showed echoes of the way she had accepted her um, announcement as Queen at Hatfield the previous November where she had recited a, uh, a passage from the New Testament but in Latin. Elizabeth was the third of Henry VIII's children to reign as monarch. She was 25 years old, she reigned for 44 years and her era has gone down in history as a golden era of English history. She was succeeded by the first king of both Scotland and England and I'm sure we'll cover that story in a future video. On the 14th of January 1742 at the age of 85 Edmund Halley, known for the discovery of Halley's Comet, died at Greenwich. Halley and other scientists at the time were trying to work out the mechanics behind planetary movement and it's his work to do with that that led him to be able to link three sightings of a particular comet which he was able to then demonstrate were in fact the same comet which is now known to us as Halley's Comet. He took evidence from sightings in 1531, 1607 and 1682 and was able to demonstrate that these were in fact the same comet. On the 18th of January 1486, Henry VII married Elizabeth of York, uniting the houses of York and Lancaster. Elizabeth was the eldest daughter of Edward IV and his wife Elizabeth Woodville. They were married at Westminster Abbey. Their first son, Arthur, was born eight months later on the 20th of September in Winchester. Also in this week, Michael Bond, the creator of Paddington Bear, was born 13th of January, 1926. Thank you for watching this episode of This Week in British History. And if you did enjoy it, please do subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and hit the bell for notifications so that you can get uh, notice when I upload next week's video. But if you can't wait that long, please come along to my Facebook page or Instagram, 
the links are in the show notes below. I've also included in the show notes some of my sources and further reading, which you can go and explore if you're interested in any of the stories that we've covered today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.